All right, guys, we're back in the Porsche project. Had a delivery today. FedEx man brought some parts. Brought us a gasket set that we've got from Mr. Rhines. And these boxes, a set of main bearings and a set of rod bearings. So what we're gonna do by starting, um, I took the, both sections of the block parts washed them again and took them out of the driveway little Dawn water hose blew them off try to get every little piece of junk I can out of there so we'll wipe them out again I took this piece I wasn't happy with how that turned out so I took this back to work and re-welded it and actually chucked down the mill machine and ran a fly cutter over it got it pretty good there's still a slight gap i'm not sure what's going on but the whole case kind of curls up at this end too but it all checks flat with a precision straight edge so we are going to start this process by getting the uh crankshaft back together we will bring that over and put it on the bench so i've got it in the freezer and the gears in the oven. So I'm going to go and grab them and I will be right back. All right, here's what we're doing. Putting the cam gear on. Keys are already in there. Cam gear, spacer, distributor drive gear, and the snap ring that holds it all on. Here is our frosty crankshaft in our smoking hot gears probably should have used oven mitts on this one because I think I burned myself chamfered side goes down towards the chamfer awesome the spacer goes on next hope you all can see this the spacer doesn't really matter which side it is probably gonna have to beat this thing on there yes didn't have any piece of pipe etc the right size I was hoping that bearing would do it so we're just gonna do old school here guess I should have needed that bad boy too let's see if these things will spread it enough on there give that some lub taps I hope it does not matter direction for distributor gear don't think it does lined up right that thing should go combination all right now the snap ring is down here in the box I lose the gloves we'll wipe this thing off let me make sure you can see me I didn't just waste my time doing that no we're good 
Let me get you a little closer. These these are pretty cool. They're snap-on. They stay parallel the whole way. So just kind of helps open things up better. Of course, this thing doesn't care where it goes. So that part is on there. Um, we will let that cool. And then I'm going to be off for tonight. So what we will do next, we will get this all wiped out and then I'll lay the uh, crank bearings in there. And then we will uh, put the case halves together and we will attempt to use the dial bore gauge to see what our bore looks like. Because we've mic'd the crank and we are spot on there. So we'll see if we can use that thing and get that all laid out and make sure we're all good. Um, then we will start putting this thing back together. I will. Uh, I'll figure out a path forward be a little more organized. I just wanted to get some of this out of the way. So we're clean. A nice frosty crankshaft over there. Alright guys, so we're out in the garage again tonight. Um, I'm excited because I got new parts, so we're going to try to get some of this Porsche engine back together before I lose parts. So we have the crankshaft here. We had it over there in the parts washer and washed it out, brought it over here to the bench, blew it out. Um, so now we will get it cleaned up and try to get the connecting rods onto it. And yes, it is like 90 degrees out here. So we will zoom you out here and we will start putting this thing back together. So blew this out with compressed air through all the journals. I'll show you that real quick. Pretty much. Anyway, blew everything out pretty well. We'll hit it with some brake cleaner. Again, I flush some through there, wipe everything off. Throw some gloves on. So when I took this apart. If y'all watch those videos, I'm not sure if anybody does, but the rod numbers were really didn't make any sense. So I restamped them and used my phone and made sure I had them right, had them oriented correctly. So, what we'll do, um, to make this even better, we'll flip it over. That'll give me an opportunity to wipe off all the stuff. So anyway, there we go. So, we can go in numerical order. So this would be the number one cylinder, which is right here. So we'll go ahead and pull off rod nuts. 
Now I've read conflicting reports whether or not I need to replace these. And they're also side marked. So there's a 777 right there and the C and the 1. Which I marked on both of them to keep them together. So we'll take the old nasty bearings out. You know what, I'm going to turn you off for a second and go over the parts washer and I'll probably pull all these bearings out and go ahead and wash everything so we don't have to stop and start a million times. Alright, now that I'm prepared, we um, cleaned using the parts washer, wiped off the crank with a clean lint free rag. Um, this is the orientation that Rob was in when I took it off, so it should be exactly the way using my phone as memory. Um, it should be just like it was. So, I've got all the rest of them cleaned up here. This is number one cylinder, pull it apart. My new 20 under bearings right here. Touching, apparently you're not supposed to touch them with oily hands or whatever. So I got gloves on because it can stain the bearings. And cause like the world to come to an end. So there's the one. Rod, stick one cap, and that tang drops in a little tang slot, whatever it's called. Looks like a tang to me. You kind of just flush them up and they will seat themselves. And then we'll go on with the number numbers facing. There's a one right there, one right there. They will go together just like that. So we shoot on here. This is just motor oil. I'm not sure assembly loot is really needed. This thing's going to spin a million times before it ever starts. There should be a load on it. Put some bearing, put some oil on both sides of the bearing. Let's see. Uh, maybe it's tight. Alright, so. Everything trial ran together. Shoot a little more oil in here. This is our number one rod. Drop the cap under here, make sure I don't scratch the journal. Lines up the way it was originally. And when I took this apart, I did check all the side clearance and everything was good. Now we'll put the rod nuts on. And then I've seen conflicting information about you should replace these every time. Blah, blah, blah. I'm choosing not to. These were new in 1986 and they've been like taken off and on once, so I'm going to take my chances. These are 14 millimeter. I'm going to snug them down and they're pulled together. Feels good. I'm going to go ahead and get the rest on here and then we'll go back and do the torque sequence. All right, I got some help. I'm 
gonna go back through and double check. All right, there we go. We have the rods on the crankshaft with bearings that don't look like that. So it's still, like I said, 88 degrees and it's getting late. So we will see you on the next time.